Kush's Movie Review. Yes, welcome to Kush's Movie Review on episode 129 of the Bob Box. If you are watching the standalone version on the YouTube, don't forget to leave us a thumbs up, give us a subscribe, and let us know in the comments what you thought about the movie or what you thought about the review. This week's movie review is The Holdovers. It's a movie about um, someone that works in an Apple store and they've got some new stock coming in. But a friend's like, hey, man, I can't get down there tomorrow. Can you can you hold me S -s new iPhone? Yeah, man, I'll hold it over for you. The end. It's the best mm. I could do. It's not yeah, the best. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Um, the movie is The Holdovers. This movie is rated R. It is uh, girthy, two hours and 13 minutes. It uh, is written by Alexander, uh, excuse me, it is directed, directed by Alexander Payne. And if you're wondering why you've heard that name, uh, he did Election, which is a fantastic movie. Matthew Broderick, Reese Witherspoon, 1998. Uh, are you familiar with that film, Mike? Sure. I, I would absolutely tell you to go out and find. I, I mean, I, I would say go rent it because that's how I experienced it, but it's probably on Prime or something. Get so, down to uh, your local blockbuster. Go down to the blockbuster or Suncoast video. Yes, sir. Uh, he did a movie called Sideways, also with uh, Paul Giamatti. It, that's that's a, a wine lovers love that movie. I uh, One of my first, first gigs in production was traveling down to Santa Barbara. It was funny, like, somebody just comes like, I need someone to ride with me to Santa Barbara. You, I'm, you, you in? I was like, yeah, I'm in. He's like, I'm leaving at six tomorrow. Never meant to do it before. Jumped in the car, drove down to Santa Barbara. And we went to uh, the, the, the subject we were recording for this show on ABC that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, she also owns a winery in Santa Barbara. And absolutely, five times this movie came up sideways and it's just like all right I, I i don't care i'm not gonna see it and then most recently he did a movie called downsizing with uh matt damon where he is a full-sized man in oh order i to saw that movie him. awful that thing it's... was fucking awful <laughs> i hated that that was my most hated movie of 2017 it like, was one of those movies where like i the the premise seems cool premise but... was very cool but yeah, it wasn't wasn't executed very well. It was not good. It was no bueno. Uh, this movie is written also by a man named Dave, David Hemmingson. David Hemmingson. Hemmingson. Um, you've never heard him. Uh, he's done a lot of TV. He's done a lot of TV. Uh, an episode here, an episode there. How I Met Your Mother. American Dad. Uh, don't trust the bee in apartment 23 uh, he, he's done that and many many more so uh, this movie stars as I mentioned the aforementioned uh, Paul Giamatti uh, Divine Joy Randolph and then uh, Dominic Sessa I don't know what those last two people have been in but Paul Giamatti everyone loves the Giamatti I hate not. to be that guy but he's kind of just a one trick pony is his whole thing is he talks like this very loudly and gets upset to the point where the vein is popping out of his head and that's supposed to be funny it, it, it gets it he, he's the short italian samuel l jackson it, it's I, I mean i guess he's got a thing and he's good at it so good for him but yeah that's i don't look forward to paul giamatti movies um, fun fact paul giamatti's dad bart giamatti Used to be the um, uh, chairman of Major League Baseball. Just the facts, ma'am. That's a fun fact. Yeah, it's pretty dope. I used to have his trading card. Anyways, The Holdovers. This is a movie set in the 70s uh, and is designed to look like a movie from the 70s. It's a little kitsch. It's a gimmick for sure. You know I love a gimmick, but I don't give a shit about this. Uh I missed the theatrical run for this. This movie came out, I want to say, around September, maybe October. And then, you know, it did its 45-day window. And then you can find it now streaming on Prime or Apple TV or whatever for like 10 bucks to rent or something. Um, we we watched it at home here because it uh, it was designed to be released in the theaters at one point in time so that it would be make it home in time for christmas i absolutely believe that and uh the gimmick is 
it's a prep school. The holidays are coming up. And unfortunately, not everybody goes home for the holidays. Some folks <gasps> get held over, as the title oh, says. No. So you can't just have these kids running around and you can't kick them out. So one teacher and the lunch lady, they st- stay on campus for those two weeks. And, you know, they do the barest, bare minimumist of anything. And, you know, um, our kid uh, Dominic Sessa, he's surrounded with about eight to ten other kids in this situation. And then, you know what, something happens. Someone's dad caves in. They're trying to make a point about, you You need to cut your hair, son. You, 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 you look like a faggot and a hippie. You look like a hippie faggot. Uh, and then eventually dad caves in and sends a helicopter to the school. And uh, it's, he's only to pick up the sim. It sounds like, who wants to go skiing in in Aspen? We got room on the helicopter, and, and almost everybody else goes, except for Dominic. I don't know if there wasn't room on the helicopter, or he just didn't want to go because he didn't like another kid. Uh, but Dominic ends up staying behind, and so Paul Giamatti and Divine Joy Rudolph Randolph, uh, they have to look after him. Uh, honestly movie's kind of dull i mean it's it's supposed to be a slow burn it's supposed to be like a movie from the 70s i'm cool with all that however i don't like the characters i don't like paul giamatti's character he's an unlikable bastard and they they talk about that like "Eh, that unlikable bastard's gonna have to hang out on campus all christmas Eh, fuck him And, and i don't like the kid he's he's got his issues but also i just i don't care i don't care He's in a shitty situation where mom is married to a new guy and they're like, we can't pick you up for Christmas, son. We, we haven't had our honeymoon yet. And I'm like, I guess that's not unreasonable, but he's also 17. He could probably just hang out at home while you guys fucking Niagara Falls or or wherever you guys are going for the honeymoon. You you don't need to leave him there at the school. Um, The only character I do like was divine joy Randolph. Uh, But I, it's it's it gets her story gets old very quickly she's a she's a widow her her she lost her son in vietnam she's a very tragic character and i get it but that after that there's two hours and 12 minutes left in the movie Ugh. all right excuse me two hours and eight minutes left in the movie it's a five oh, minute bad that's not bad yeah, yeah, yeah anyway look it's a uh, i'm in the minority of here uh, of people who was not charmed by this movie did not like this movie or at least i didn't care for it um did not like is not as strong as hate but still it's the movie's only okay and when it was in theaters the only things i was hearing about it was i love this movie it was just like a movie from the 70s and i was like you know what if you're that impressed the internet either easily impressed or you never went over. It's there's nothing in the middle, unfortunately. So uh, if you're really impressed by a movie that looks like it was made in the '70s, there's plenty of movies that you haven't seen that are actually from the '70s. Uh, yeah. I'm going to recommend Network. Uh, I'm going to recommend Shaft, and I'm going to recommend Easy Rider. Although I think that was '68, but whatever. So uh, the yeah, holdovers, like I. I I don't want to dislike anything, but it ain't great. I, I felt obligated to watch this. Um, it's cr- themes of Christmas, themes of New Year. The characters don't like each other, but then they bond. They all just, we all have something in common and we learn a little something about each other. And then the movie's over. Uh, three out of five. It's a very limp three out of five. No one likes a limp three out of five. No, they do not. Give me a rock hard throbbing three out of five. Mm. I would like to, but not this time. So, um, piggybacking off your little fun fact earlier, dig it. Do you know the actress Kate Mara? I'm familiar with her. I couldn't point her out of a lineup this second, though. Anyway, she has been. What has she been? I mean, uh... like I know the name. She has. Been in. She was. Oh, I was going to say she was. She was in. She was in. What have we got? What have we got recently? What's the recently coming out? She was. Uh, 
Yeah, never mind. I've never heard of these movies. Um, but anyway, I know she's <laughs> well, you, uh, maybe I have. <laughs> but all right, she, so she was in um, a movie called um, "My Days of Mercy." Nope. Um, Megan Levy. Nope. Captive. No. The Martian. Yes. Oh, she was Beth Johansson in The Martian. Beth Johansson. So the, I only... There were two women in The Martian. One is the chick from Saturday Night Live, and the other is is uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, I think. Uh, but I don't remember a third You're thinking one. of Kristen Wiig. Kristen Wiig, yeah, 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 yeah. And... It's Bryce Good. Dallas Howard, right? Or is it the other red-headed lady? Jessica like Chastain. Jessica Chastain, who also looks like Bryce Dallas Howard. That's embarrassing. But still. By the so, way, BDH has a... has she, She's got the thick back. She's got that thick back, son. Good for her. Um. So she was the uh, the systems operator in that movie. Okay, so... All right, so she probably had, like, one scene. She's like, oh, my God, sir. Something's happening on Mars right now. I think that, that that's most likely her scene. That's probably her dialogue, word for word. She was also uh, Sue Storm. Oh, she played Invisible Woman in oh, Fantastic okay. Four in 2015. Uh, I did not see that, but that uh, that does narrow it down because there was only one Sue Storm. So, okay. yeah. I, anyway, my point is, as a fun fact, fun is fact. Kate Mara, actress... Kate Mara. Is niece of John Mara, co-owner of the New York Giants. Just the facts, ma'am. Okay. So that's why it came to mind because there was like this actress and then sports connection. Okay. Does she? Did I miss her in the holdovers? No, it's just oh. Oh, I, that's a celebrity that has a sports connection. Okay. It just popped into my mind when you mentioned about the MLB bollocks. Dig it. So that's okay. why that's why I wait until you gave you know the end because I didn't I want to jump that. in with that because it has nothing I, to do with the movie. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I hope this isn't part of the single review either. Maybe it is now. Now that I said it, I don't want. Yeah, to I, might, I might edit it. I might not. Probably won't, but I might. <laughs> There's only one way to find out. <laughs> um. Dude, we talked to Santa Claus a minute ago. We did. So if, if this is still part of the movie review. Go check out the fucking Christmas episode, guys. Listen to, to our conversation with Santa episode. Claus. We spoke to the real Santa Claus. That shit was awesome. And it got a little raunchy too. It was fire. I was I was not expecting that. Um before we move on to this week's feel good story of the week, um, Kush mentioned the man's name. I did. Um his name was David Rush. Oh yeah. Baby Rush, baby. Um, so if you're not familiar with the man, he we've mentioned him several times in our Dumb World Record segment because he breaks a lot of world records, all for a very good cause. And so thanks through through the power of electronic mail, we was finally That's able to connect with Mr. David Rush, and he Ooh. has agreed to lend us his likeness. For a pretty goddamn sweet swag, a little merch line where if you go to wafflemerch.com, you'll see the David Rush Appreciation Society. There's a t shirt, there is a hoodie. Ooh. Uh, is there a mug? I think we should have a mug. If there's not a mug, I'll add a mug. Um, yeah. But all of the profits from those merchandise. Because he, you know, we asked him, you know, what charity do you want to do? So all of it goes to uh, the Discovery Center of Idaho, which is basically kind of like a sciencey center thing. So and okay. it's like it's a place that what they say is they they want to inspire mm. a lifelong interest in STEM, mm -hmm. which stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics mm -hmm. in children. So that's what we'll be doing. So. I'm going to buy one. I can't wait to buy one because it looks like a fucking sweet t-shirt to me. It's David Rush Appreciation Society. Go to wafflemarch.com. Buy that t-shirt. Buy that hoodie. Buy the mug. There'll be a mug soon. And the pro all the profits because, you know, because Teespring, they need to make their money, I guess. 
<laughs> but Water Puppets will be dedicated to Discovery Center, I hope, um, to help the future children of Dude, these lands. I got one of those horrible Visa gift cards last year for Christmas, and I didn't like no, almost nothing takes it, but I'm going to use it to get me a David Rush appreciation t shirt. God damn it. Uh, assuming assuming our, our our distributor takes the visa gift card fingers crossed probably uh, it's literally it's just it's a it's 50 dollars worth of plastic i i can only look at because everyone's like yeah you, we can't take this man <laughs> just, yeah, I, remember, even... I remember work gave me one for like uh, like a, uh, like so a the worst gift card thing. you could possibly give anybody no but this one they gave me like it was an american express gift card I, I even that, I had struggle uh, spending that. You know, I was thinking, it's fucking America Express, right? But whatever. Anyway, so yeah, David Rush oh, Appreciation Society. Let's go. Get get it done. Get, get it, it done. done. Get it done. Get it done. Get not. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, obviously the phrase is "get her done." But because you're British and you, you can't use an accent, you gotta say, get it done. Get it done. <laughs> or, or, or our version would be proceed. Proceed. Nice. Nice. Yeah, or, that's a t-shirt right there. Just, Mike, Mike doing this. Proceed. Yes. Mike. I think the, we just came with your new catchphrase, dude. Mike, the British television. Person that man, the Mike, YouTube's the Mike Fish. television personality. Oh no, whatever. Anyway, or it's, it's me just doing this, pointing. It just oh, says yeah. pro- proceed. Dude, get a screenshot of that. Hold, wait, 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 go. Hold that for three seconds. One, two, three. Okay, that's the shirt right there. Proceed. Fuck yeah, dude. Oh, we're gonna make we're gonna make so many dollars. Dozens, dozens of dollars. Dozens of dollars. That's all, folks.